Welcome to the SLP Stress Management Podcast, your place to manage stress, reduce the risk of burnout, and find more balance in your life. In and out of being an SLP, a helping professional, and really just as a human being. I'm your host, Jesse Andrix, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between toxic positivity and positivity itself. Stress, especially in the SLP and helping professional world, is a common thing and something that you've probably struggled with a lot in the last two years. I think everyone everywhere has struggled with stress in the last two years. But it's just as possible that you were trying to figure it out and struggling with it long before that. And without finding ways to work through and manage the stress, it can shift to full-blown burnout. And this is where having some tools to help really comes in handy. One of the biggest tools of stress management is the use of positivity. It can help you to shift out of the negative thought spirals, reduce the stress you're feeling, and then prevent it from coming back or prevent it from affecting you as deeply. So it can build resiliency to stress. It has to be real positivity to work. Otherwise, it can backfire. Positivity is sometimes used to tell you to just keep smiling, to cheer up, that there's no use in feeling down. And when you're stressed, among other times, uh, it can be a really not so great thing. Hearing that can just make you feel more stressed. It can make you feel wrong. And in fact, this like only seeing the positive, maintain a positive mindset at all times, is known as toxic positivity. This type of positivity forces you to only look at the good, constantly seek the blessings in disguise, and believe that everything happens for a good reason, even if it includes trauma and incredibly difficult circumstances. This is when positivity itself can become not so positive. So I'm not saying that you can't look for the good in things or that you can't believe that everything happens for a reason, but it's when you disregard that there is anything negative happening that it can make the stress worse. So when you pretend that the stress itself isn't there and say, this is only good, that's when it becomes toxic. So with so much stress and stressful moments, is there even room for positivity? And is it even a good thing? Yes. Positivity itself is great. It is needed. Like I said, it is a tool. Toxic positivity is just that. It's toxic. According to the site VeryWellMind.com, toxic positivity is the belief that no matter how dire or difficult the situation is, people should maintain a positive mindset. We all know that having a positive outlook on life is good for your mental well-being. The problem is that life isn't always positive. We all deal with painful emotions and experiences. So this is not the same as positivity. Positivity, by definition, is a practice of being or tendency to be positive or optimistic in attitude. It's more than just being happy, right? So it's not saying that you can only be positive or optimistic in attitude. It's saying that this is your kind of foundation or the way you tend to lean. So positivity is being aware and mindful of the positive aspects and moments of your day in life to help you cultivate more optimism, kindness, and positive outlook, while in turn decreasing the feelings of negativity maybe anxiety and chronic stress. Note that it doesn't say ignoring those feelings. When it comes to toxic positivity versus positivity, one focuses on ignoring and invalidating and creating a false reality, while the other focuses on the full picture and perspective, seeing the things that you might otherwise be missing. So here's the thing, your brain is absolutely wired to find the negative and seek out the stress and the potential stress around you. It's a survival mechanism. 
And this keeps you seeking more stress and that fires up the alarm system in your stress response within your brain. That's why once you have like one stressful thing, if you aren't able to process it and move on, it can feel like things start to snowball and there are so many stressful moments happening without anything else. Toxic positivity would tell you to stop with the negative and cheer up. It's not happening. There's no room for that in your life. And while that sounds great, it absolutely makes you feel like you're wrong for feeling stressed and it doesn't do anything to address the stress you're feeling and facing and help manage it. It just ignores it. Positivity, on the other hand, allows you to notice the stress without ignoring it because your body's already doing that, right? Your brain and your body are already noticing the stress. It also helps you notice the things that your brain is not focusing on the good moments of your day, the pieces that are going well, and the things you can learn and use as you move forward. And a note here, when you ignore the stress, it doesn't go away and it doesn't usually stay the same. It typically builds. And so this is another way that toxic positivity can totally backfire while positivity can help you see it and also notice these other parts to help your brain shift. So one says like failure isn't an option. The other says, I failed, it sucks. What can I learn from this next time? I like to think of it like toxic positivity is this, but, and positivity is yes, and, or even this, and. So toxic positivity is saying like, this is happening, but look on the bright side. Positivity is saying this is happening and look on the bright side. Like you're experiencing the stress, but you look at the good that comes from it. Or you're experiencing this stress and look at what you can learn from it. One excludes the stress you're feeling. One includes it with a way to move forward and through it. So toxic positivity leaves no room for feelings of negativity, no room for stress. Positivity knows you're already feeling and seeing that and it helps you see the other pieces as well. Toxic positivity is about ignoring the negative. Positivity is about the full picture. So here are some common phrases that could be used, one being more of a toxic positivity and the other true positivity. Now, if you use some of these, note that sometimes they are maybe faith-based or they are something that for you helps you, but for someone else, it could make them feel worse. So I'll make a note of some of those things. And there are some that you could just see like a simple switch in the wording can really help. Like this first one, good vibes only versus good vibes. Good vibes only is toxic because it doesn't allow for other feelings. It's saying you can only have good moments here. We don't want any of that other stuff. Good vibes is more like, hey, let's let's have some positivity here. It's not the only thing that's going to happen, but it's what we're going to try and bring. Another one is very common that we hear, everything happens for a reason versus how can I find purpose or meaning in this? Now, some people do find everything happens for a reason to be very comforting. And at times I absolutely found this, but this can become toxic when it is used when there is something horrendous that has happened, a war, a mass shooting, something incredibly traumatic, and that could be losing a loved one. So for someone, this can be toxic, especially for trauma. When you shift it to, or if you're saying it to yourself, how can I find purpose or meaning in this instead of everything happens for a reason? It shifts to building a purpose from it, to finding meaning after it. Another one you may hear is always look on the bright side. So I love the bright side, right? And, and looking for being optimistic is not wrong, but saying, always be optimistic, always look on the bright side instead of maybe just look on the bright side or even what is going well. When we say what is going well, it's kind of this intention that we're meaning when we say always look on the bright side. But again, always look on the bright side doesn't allow for other feelings. It's telling you this is the only thing to do. What is going well says, okay, 
what's working for me today, right? What is going well here? It's not saying, and don't talk about the other parts. Failure is not an option. Let's just say that in general, that's just, that's not great, right? Right? It's toxic because there's no room for other things. So instead of saying failure is not an option, we can say, what can I learn from this? Instead of saying I'm not allowed to fail, we could say I might fail and what can I learn from it? What can I do better or change or shift or learn for next time? Another one is simply smile. Why aren't you smiling? Be happy. It's great to be happy. It's great to smile. Sometimes we just don't feel like it, right? This is toxic because, you know, just ew. (laughs) So again, it's not wrong to be happy. It's not wrong to smile. But if someone just isn't feeling that way, we don't have to force someone to feel that way. If you notice that someone looks down, you could simply say, how are you doing today? Are you doing okay today? I'm here if you need anything. So where have you experienced toxic positivity when you're feeling stressed in your life? Sometimes it comes from others. Sometimes it comes from our own inner voice and pressure. How can you start to make a shift in the language you use to create true positivity and lessen the toxic positivity. Share in the comments below or send me an email at jessie at jessieandrix.com or you can share in your Instagram stories and tag at jessieandrix or send me a DM. For more tools that can help you shift to the positive and reduce the stress you face without negating how you feel, make sure to check out the upcoming SLP Stress Management course. You can get on the wait list below to be the first to know when it opens for enrollment and get some free resources to use in the meantime by subscribing below. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and I hope to see you back here next time. Love and light to you. What if... You could be surrounded by stressors, maybe even more than you're facing now, and not feel as weighed down or overwhelmed by them. And in those moments where you do feel stressed and weighed down, what if you knew that you didn't have to stay stuck there or that you could come out of it sooner and stronger than in times past? Well, you can, there's a word for this and it's called resilience. Resilience is exactly what we discuss and work towards in the Resilient SLP monthly workshop series. Each month we take an hour or maybe a little bit more live to discuss some ways that we can build resilience or incorporate practices that will help you to reduce the stress that you're facing, to build that resilience to it, and to continue to manage it even when things are incredibly overwhelming. I hope you'll join me for this ongoing monthly workshop series. You can check out more at jessieandrix.com on the membership tab.